What's going on, y'all? This is 2B1 Energy out here, Chula Vista, California, I A. So, um, I'm gonna explain it really fast, okay? I've been calling myself 2B1 Energy since 2006 as my stage name when I'm on stage playing the music, doing what I do. Um, a lot of times, I've been getting a little backlash for the way I think in regards to what's been going on. I'm not gonna mention any type of jargon that they want me to mention in order for them to get their propaganda out. However, what I want to say is this, is that in order to be on stage or in order to sing as much as I do, you have to have the lung capacity. You have to have what I call that inner self from your diaphragm to be able to sing. So I have to stay in shape in order to accomplish this unless I decide to retire. But I haven't decided to retire yet, so I'm still out here doing it. So for the past four days, I've been singing four days in a row for about three hours, four hours a day, whether it's rehearsal or for the community or such. I am a kind of person that I'm not going to try to denounce what anybody else wants to do. But me personally, I don't go see any type of medical physicians or nurses unless I absolutely have to. I do have previous ailments from my past. So, for example, I have an old baseball injury from when I used to play baseball in semi-pro, and I tore my shoulder socket. My shoulder socket just got torn, like, bam, just got tore up. And so I have, like, a little shoulder problem. It hurts almost every single night. Um, uh, before that, though, I have a slice uh, tendon in my ring finger, but I cannot lift up this finger right here. Now, all this happened, these two injuries happened before I got back into music. So, I can't really lift up that finger, I can't move that finger, I have a shoulder problem. Okay, um, I do probably uh, have some ankle issues from actually being uh, an athlete, even though I stopped playing baseball, I kept on playing basketball. And as I got older, I noticed that my ankles are like saying, no, it's time to stop playing basketball. Um, I used to do the pedicab in downtown San Diego. Like, and from the pedicab, I did not wear clips. A lot of professional cyclists out there wear clips to be able to get that torque action, uh, to be able to get that torque action to work up your quad muscles. But I didn't have that, so my leg is actually torqued like this, which is uh, painful as well. It's uh, painful as well. So every night I'm in some type of pain but I don't take any painkillers. I don't take any Motrin. I don't take any aspirin. I don't take any type of pharmaceutical medicines for my pain. I call it pain tolerance. Having some type of pain tolerance will help your mindset to make you still keep on going because even though you feel the pain, um, you still want to accomplish your goals. It's almost like uh, anything else. It's an organic type of way of thinking. A lot of people can't tolerate the pain which is why they go and see something for their shoulder, something for their knee or their, their tendon. And so for each their own. However, when it comes down to nutrition, this is something that's different. I feel like nutritional ways of thinking have altered our mind. I keep, uh, I saw my nephew like a couple of years ago, I was talking to him and he was eating a bowl of cereal. And I told him, I said, you know, this used to be World War II food. I don't know, like uh, World War I. Um, all these companies came out with these ready-to-eat meals during the Depression. So when they came out with these meals during the Depression, all of a sudden it was a flood of money going into these kind of products to help people eat really cheap. Really cheap. And then you have things like uh, the fast food joints really coming into play in the, right after World War II. It's another type of cheap product for people to consume. Uh, but it wasn't meant to consume on a regular basis unless you knew that it was a really cheap way of eating. And it was experimental, meaning that they knew that it wasn't necessarily the best way to actually keep your nutrition up, but it's something that the public can actually gain a little bit of money by keeping the food down at a low cost for them to be able to go out there and buy a house, buy a car, and buy all these things.